We got a beautiful sunrise. The front line has just passed. So you can still see the blue sky over there. And over here is the low pressure coming. Uh, this front's coming in from the west. We're headed northwest. Having sailed three quarters of the way around the world, we now embark on the final segment of our circumnavigation. The vast expanse of the Atlantic stands before us. We're looking at a grueling 5,000 nautical mile voyage with two little kids that should take around six to eight weeks. A journey that promises to redefine our limits, pushing us in ways that none of our previous voyages ever have. I'm not necessarily worried right now, but um, as a seaman, you always have to think, what's the next step, and what's the next step after that? Right now, we're headed due north, trying to outrun a cold front. Our first stop, St. Helena, one of the most remote islands in the world. Sun's coming up. Oh my gosh, what a day. And not in the good way. Today has been hell, absolute hell. Basically, the entire family sat in the helm seat for the entire day. The entire day. We got two sick babies, seasick. Cody just puked. I luckily caught it in my hand and threw it overboard. Uh, if you ever wonder if kids get seasick, absolutely. I would say that um, it's not as smooth sailing today as we thought it would be. Bodhi's KO'd, it's not nap time, but he's uh, seasick a little bit. Willa's been seasick. We're all chilling. This is the chill out spot for the seasickness spot. It's a good spot. When you think about the sea, the oceans, if you put your finger in the water here, that connects to every continent on Earth. It allows you to go on adventures that you can't do on land. There's no stop signs or barricades. There's no fences that say, do not enter. It's an astounding freedom. A freedom that sometimes demands a price. So it's late, it's midnight actually. We have almost officially been out here a week and uh, I've been so preoccupied with getting out of Cape Town I haven't really actually paid all that much attention to how far we have to go. I mean, we were like, it's two weeks to St. Helena, and then it's two weeks to Fernando del Noronha, and then it's two weeks to Grenada. And I was like, yeah, no big deal. Okay, two, four, six. All right, six weeks passage. So we knew that. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but when you actually like sit down and write down the nautical miles, like I did tonight, because we're already a week in. Yeah, if you add all that up, 32 days at sea, not counting the seven we've already had. So that's 37 days at sea in the next two months. Time to fill the diesel tanks. Been motoring for uh, just over 24 hours, probably about 36 hours. We've eaten through about uh, 100 liters, maybe, yeah, 100 liters, just over, so. Normally we burn between one and a half and two liters an hour, but since we've been trying to get out of this system which is coming upon us now and get ahead of it and get as far north as possible, we have just been motoring at whatever the hell speed we want, which is as fast as we can comfortably go. means we've been burning about two and a half liters an hour and both engines and we've never ever normally rot cruise with both engines running. There's a storm front coming. Uh, there's no point in having diesel unless it's in your tanks. We're down to 50 liters per tank now. We went from glassy calm a few minutes ago to ripples on the water and this is the start of the end for us. The end of motoring but also the end of calm cruising. I feel like by probably anywhere between midnight and 6 a.m. this morning, we're gonna get wind. And it's gonna be on the nose. So it's gonna be a challenging night. Uh, the first few days of passage are always hard. And this passage has been absolutely no exception. I feel like a million bucks right now. I just had a shower. Um, it's, it, was, it was hectic getting ready to go. 
Uh, I was exhausted when we left and today has been a really nice reprieve and we really needed it and I think it's been really it's been really good for the crew and the captains. <laughs> you can start to see the clouds up there. I think it's early. All right, we're going to try for some fish today. Seeing lots of bird activity around. Uh, the water is about 24, 25 degrees now, so uh, that's uh, Mahi Mahi territory, Yellowfin ter territory, uh, Wahoo territory. So we'll see if we can catch anything. We'll try, uh, try pinky again. Pink always works, man. You're supposed to use, so you're supposed to use uh, dull colors, not so bright colors on overcast days like today, and then bright colors on bright days. But we'll try pink. We'll go against the grain today. For the apocalypse? Yeah, I checked the checked everything again. Checked all the lines for chafe. I checked the rig. Oh, that's out a little far. To bring that in, that's way too much. That's way too loose. I did replace all the battens in the sail to be full length instead of battens with connectors. The new gooselex neck looks fine. I look for chafe lines. Uh, I've checked, put diesel in the tanks, fixed a squeak on the steering arm. I mean, what else is there to do? Turn off the flashlight in your pocket. Oh yeah, stop lighting up my pocket. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're, I think we're ready. I mean. It's been a while since we've gone through a front like this. I don't know if we ever have. I think we've always gone with it. But it's no big deal. We'll just have to run with it if we need to. I don't think it's gonna get that windy. Famous last words. Woot, woot. We're sailing! This is the officially the first time we have been sailing on this trip without an engine running at all. And it happened on my ship. Ben had put two reefs in the main, expecting there to be wind left over from this front. The wind never showed up. I got tired of going slow. I didn't like the motor. The port engine died. And I pulled out the sails. And now the wind's picked up <laughs> as it does. But it's still well within reason. And uh, we are sailing along at over seven knots now. In the right direction. And the waves aren't too bad. And tomorrow's gonna be awesome. We're still fairly close hauled. The wind's basically on our beam and it will keep backing as we keep heading north um, here over the next day, which is awesome. And then we should be running on about a broad reach for the rest of the trip after, it's probably around tomorrow afternoon. News flash, the temperature is getting warmer. We are in our new fallies. We call them fallies now, wet weather gear, whatever you want to call them. Um, we love them. These are these are from Zeke. I've been wearing them every night, every day when I'm outside, and it's been freaking awesome. And I've got multiple layers. I've been wearing their um, their long underwear underneath too. It is the comfiest long underwear I've ever had. So brilliant. We're in love. It's a beautiful night. I even have a crack open up here to see the stars. I'm starting to feel like the tropics are nearing. It's only midnight. I still have two more hours to go. Ben gets up at two. I better go make some tea. I'm not gonna make it. A little update here for you. We're sitting in anywhere from uh, 16 to 20 knots. True now. We tried the heave two method. So when you heave two, you put the boat in a configuration where she simply side slips to the wind. And the idea is that the slick or the smoothness of the water uh, created to windward as you're side slipping smooths out the waves. But the whole last night, because we uh, misjudged how fast we went, uh, we've been sitting out here, heave to, hove to? I don't know how to conjugate that one, but we've been sitting out here, hove to.
which basically means we parked our freaking boat by putting the rudder hard to port actually bend it on most of this and then we've got our sail our main sail uh, double reefed and it's on the starboard tack and our port tack so starboard side and then we've got a bit of genoa pulled out to just stop us from tacking accidentally so it's pulled out um, on the wrong side so all of that has kind of led us to drifting at about one knot conveniently in the direction we want to go sometimes two knots on our boat it works we can do it the problem is the boat still is really wobbly and hobby horsing side to side so then the seasickness becomes an issue so we actually like to keep a little bit of way on a little bit of forward motion it's not that windy really i mean it's 20 knots true that's pretty average uh santa catarina did she post santa catarina replying yeah, just a quick question. Uh, what is uh, your intention? Uh, everything uh, uh, good with your engines? Uh, uh, you don't have any problems? Yes. Uh, nice that you are asking. Uh, everything is okay. Uh, we just uh, start drifting, just use the ETA change. And uh, if you agree, we will uh, keep uh, uh, clear bird from you, like minimum four nautical miles. Yeah, that, uh, that would be nice. Perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, back to 1.6. Thank you very much. Back to 1.6. So there's various freighters out here just drifting um, because their, their, their ETA has changed. Um, it's just the way it works out here. They don't have a port to go into or they're waiting on, on containers to be ready um, to be loaded. So they just drift. Oh, we're only 175 miles away from shore. That's not that far. I'm a long way to go nowhere. <laughs> so today's been annoying, but really not very bad at all. We had expected a lot worse conditions and it was called for a lot worse conditions actually. Uh, the wind has never materialized quite the way we thought it would. It may be that we're slightly more to the east and are just along the very edge of the front um, as it rolls through, or maybe it hasn't rolled through quite as strong as they forecast. I mean, it's still been one of those days that's just kind of like, it's hard to move around. You're always like leaning against something. It's like, instead of walking to get something, you say, hey, can you reach that? <laughs> it's a good thing our boat's small. <laughs> it's just been one of those like, bouncy, annoying days. Pretty nice morning today. We woke up to following winds and following winds and a nice big wide space swell. The uh, Starlink is doing wonders out here. I cannot tell you how revolutionary it is. I'm posting Instagram stories, uh, Instagram posts. Uh, we did the boat reveal yesterday. Um, it just completely changes our lives because before we would be cramming in a port before we set sail to try and get as much video done and as much emailing done and business stuff and then we go sailing we get to the next port and we would repeat that and now it's just kind of like you just work on your night shift or you work part of your night shift and yes you know someone asked me recently wasn't it nice before we could just go offline and go off in the wilderness and absolutely i totally agree with that but now with youtube and the business and the way it runs the boat and our lifestyle it's changed things and you have to put that priority first before going offline and and uh saying goodbye to civilization um whoa windy on this side but yeah gorgeous today fish on fish on fish on You got your spatula ready, buddy? Fish on! Wow, it's a hairy one. Pretty hairy. Holy shit. I don't have gloves. Skippy. Fish, eh? Fish! 
All right, this one's gonna live another day. Skipjack, not our favorite. It's really stinky meat. Skipjack is canned tuna meat. It's like the nastiest of the tunas. I'm gonna give you a little update today. Uh, the uh, chops have been chopped due to a request from another crew member. They're asked to be trimmed down. So now, they're triangles. Day two. We'll see what day 20 brings. Should be nice and bushy again by then. Wasn't anticipating this clear cut move, but uh, gotta live with it now. Fish on! That's pretty little. Oh, it's a little mahi, I think. Whoa! Awesome dinner! Tacos! Whoa! How's it going out here? Oh, good. <laughs> I am a little rusty on my filleting, but uh, it's going well. <laughs> it's been a few months. So I'm gonna do this in the air fryer and I've done it once before and it was awesome, but I'm gonna try it a little different. So basically the kids love being able to just pick up the fish sticks and kind of like eat them and stuff. So this is mahi, it's gonna be so good. Flour, then egg, then panko. And uh, then I put it in the air fryer and it, it cooks it nicely actually. It's not like deep fried and I hate deep frying in the boat. It's just not, not something I like to do and I certainly don't like to do it when we're underway really. Uh, it's just a worry that it'll splash, splash around. So it's just sort of, I, I don't know if the waves have picked up, the wind has definitely picked up a little bit, but it seems like a combination, like wind and wave has just made it a little bit more gnarly tonight, so. I actually think it's fantastic. I mean, we're, we're sailing along here excellently, but uh, Ben won't sleep, I'm pretty sure. I think we gotta take this thing down, man. We are surfing at 10, 12 knots, um, which leaves us a little margin for error in terms of uh, if, if a squall comes through. But I think what we'll do is we'll blow the leeward sheet and downhaul, leeward uh, sheet and guy. We were cheating down home. And then maybe we should blow this side and I can pull it down on the right hand side, on the starboard side. Because you can have access to this side. Yep. And you can drive. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, give me a sec to set up. I'm actually gonna tether in first. down <laughs> I guess I better start an engine I'll start starboard and get in a little hot water for a shower so I have to run over to starboard to drop the halyard because the halyard uh, is on the starboard side of this boat which would be different in our new boat because we have the uh, we have the forward cockpit everything will be like right here it's it'll be kind of interesting totally different St. Helena Radio, St. Helena Radio, this is sailing vessel Nahoa on channel 16. Maybe we're still too far out. They said make contact with them 10 to 15 miles out, but we're 13 miles out.
Good evening, ma'am. Uh, this is sailing vessel Nahoa. We are approximately 12 miles out. Over. It's getting late. Uh, we'd hope to arrive in daylight. That didn't happen a long time ago. So we have probably about six, five, six miles to go. Um, another hour and uh, we'll be in there at about 1.30 in the morning. trying to do here is find the mooring field. Well, there's a mooring field here, but it's pitch black out tonight. Um, dolphins, though, are just having that poop. Escorting us in, they're playing, they're uh, splashing, they're right in our bow wake. So we're looking for a yellow mooring buoy. So we are just coming around the northernmost point of St. Helena, and of course there's a light marking the point, which is excellent. Um, I don't think there's any rocks that aren't unmarked around here. I think we're good, but it's more like buoys and floating things and other boats. And it's so strange. There's not a single boat with AIS anywhere to be seen on St. Helena. I don't know when the last time I pulled in somewhere and there wasn't a single boat broadcasting AIS. It's so deceiving at night to know actually like how close things are. Three meters forward. More to port. To port. Forward port. Made it. Made it. Good morning, welcome to St. Helena. Your, everybody obviously needs to come shoreside. You'll need to bring with you your passports, your last port of call documentation, vessel registration document, uh, and obviously your medical insurance, which you've confirmed. You're not permitted to bring any fruit, food waste, plant material, or any honey products shoreside. All copied. So I just uploaded a video to our patrons. We do this quite regularly that we do behind the scenes updates for our patrons. And the reason I mention this is because really Patreon is what got us to finishing this circumnavigation and is going to probably get us to exploring other parts of the world and showing you really cool spots. Like we're thinking Alaska, Patagonia, Northwest Passage, Japan. Um, so. I guess what I'm saying is, if you enjoyed the video, it's always going to be free on YouTube, but if you enjoyed it and you have the ability to support us uh, and want to see the videos progress, then please consider uh, signing up on Patreon. Uh, for Patreon, we do a few things. We do behind the scenes, like we're detailing right now, what we did in the latest storm, where we had to put out a drogue, and it's just a little bit more unscripted unedited but really patreon is what makes this channel work so love your support the link is in the description down below and uh otherwise we'll see you next week for another video bye bye